Yes, there was an early service. Um, there's a, a guided meditation and silent meditation service every fourth Sunday. Uh, that happens from 9.45 to 10.15 where we gather here and we have just a little bit of music guiding us into um, a stillness and a silent meditation of the whole group. So thank you for that. Um, that is such a powerful, powerful thing to do for the whole world, for your own life, for this center, um, to start your morning with that kind of stillness going within to that center space, that divine um, heart space, and recognizing uh, right away the truth with a capital T that God is all there is. There is nothing other. There's no God and. Okay, Brenda, get back here. Uh, let's see, announcements. This Wednesday night, 7 p.m., is the fourth Wednesday where we will have spiritual practices. And this year we have been practicing, this sounds so silly, we're practicing breathing. <laughs> it's a good thing to do, breathing. Um, so what we do is actually the practice is conscious breathing. Um, learning to breathe a little bit deeper, a little bit slower into that diaphragm and all of the reasons and health reasons to do that and that the ways that it, it really can change your life uh, in many, many ways. So we'll be, and we also do some Tai Chi warm up. Sometimes we get in a guided meditation. Sometimes we do some yoga moves. Uh, so it's that kind of an actual spiritual practice. That happens at 7 p.m. and those Wednesday nights are always a love offering. Also happening on Wednesday at 10 a.m. we have laughter yoga. And so, um, of 
uh, laughing and laughing together. And uh, it's, so it's a lot of fun. Deanne, if you'd raise your hand there. So Deanne is kind of heading that up. If you have questions about laughter yoga, you can ask her. 10 a.m. this Wednesday, that too is a love offering. Yeah, feel free to break out in laughter anytime. All right, uh, let's see. This uh, month has five Sundays in it. So on the fifth Sunday, we have a spiritual cinema and we're showing the movie The Shack. And that will happen probably right around one o'clock, a little before one o'clock. I keep wanting to check how long that movie is, but I keep not doing it. So I'm guessing two hours or something like that. Um, also on this fifth Sunday, we've kind of made a change up about our exceptional income. Um, we are doing, sharing our exceptional income every fifth Sunday. And we're going to make that fifth Sunday kind of a, a prosperity Sunday where we can tie those um, exceptional income gifts and, and stories into the service and make a little bit more sense of what we're doing. Uh, so I hope that works for everybody. That is next Sunday. And so be thinking about how, what you might wanna share for exceptional income as we invite you up to share your story. Um, the next date night, you guys ready for another date night? Another yeah. outdoor concert with homemade ice cream? Um, that will happen on Friday, June 28th. And our music group, uh, they're called The Ordinary Two. And um, this is a, a, I'm quite certain they're a married couple uh, out of Cedar Edge. And they do kind of a, a different indie folk rock uh, kind of music. They have a lot of originals and they do some, some covers as well. I think you'll really enjoy them. Uh, that happens at 7 p.m. with homemade ice cream. Thank you. Yeah, Nancy and Rebecca bring that. So thank you so much for that. Um, I believe that's all the announcements that I have this morning. So just invite you to take a breath here, relax a little bit, maybe shake off the morning, get ourselves centered into that heart space right now as we speak our purpose statement together. As an intentional spiritual community, the purpose of CSL is to be a living environment for individuals to realize that we are all unique emanations of God, that love intelligence governing the universe. We embody the truth of our oneness with God and we consciously practice this truth in our everyday life. Through the exploration of new thought, ageless wisdom, and the energy of unconditioned love, we are dedicated to individual transformation and to being a beneficial presence in the world.
And in this quietness, I invite you to rest in the stillness, to let the outer world dissipate, and accept with me the perfectly divine pattern of life itself. For there is only one life, one power, one presence. There is one mind, and that is God, in all, through all, as all. All that is, is the presence of God in form, brought forth with divine activity and divine wisdom, divine perfection. It is intelligence and beauty and all good things. And I am a dynamic manifestation of this God life, as each one here today is also a unique, dynamic manifestation of this God essence. In this moment, we are joyously alive. We enter the game of living with joyful anticipation, spontaneous enthusiasm, and determination to play it well. Divine energy flows through us and accomplishes all things with ease and grace. One with God's wisdom, we align ourselves with right activity, inviting and allowing it to guide and direct us to that which is for our highest good. We encounter each person with a healthy expectation of happy, healthy connections. And as this is true for each of us, this is true also for each person who has requested prayer or prayer has been requested for them. And I speak this for Christopher, Corey, David, Evan, Maria, Nancy H, Corey, Ben, Sarah, Jason, Gabe, Maddie, Nolan, Lillian, Rose, Deb, Don, and families, all children of God, Drake Ferber, Drake's family, Sherry Christensen, Phyllis K. 
Katie Christ, John Lowitz, Douglas Lowitz, Dale Smith, Linda Smith, Carol Boyd, Tony, Jessica, Dale and family, Krista, Harley and Aurora, Rebecca, Catherine, Catherine and family, Colton, Anna, Sarah E, Gus M, Ed and Betty M, Valley Food Partnership, Jim C, Bill W, Mary Ann, Grace Rennes. Each of these requests for prayer are blessed today. For there is only perfect God, perfect being, perfect man fulfilling itself in love, health, wisdom, clarity, abundance. Each desire is renewing itself right now as the perfection of spirit expressing a new and perfect wholeness. All is well. And we are blessed and honored today by the service of the volunteers that aid in our service today, for the staff, the message, the music, all who are here. We are all conscious of the consciousness of the divine that we are experiencing in each other. United in love, we are open to a greater and higher discovery of our divine heritage. So grateful for this truth, grateful for the prayers, grateful for the knowledge that we are one, united in that perfect spiritual being. I release these words into the law, knowing it is already so, as we join together in saying, and so it is.
Good morning. I'd like to call your attention to the prayer chest just down the stairs to the left, right next to the wall. There's a nice, beautiful red box with flowers on it. If you have some concerns, something that's weighing you down, please put your worries and your desires in the prayer chest and the practitioner will be doing affirmative prayer on your behalf this week. In ordinary life, we hardly realize that we receive a great deal more than we give, and that it is only with gratitude that life becomes rich. Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And from Michael Beckwith, gratitude places you in the energy field of plenitude. Perceiving life is a consciousness of gratitude, is literally stepping into another dimension of living. Suddenly, the seeming ordinariness of your days takes on a divine sparkle. Thank you, Deb. All right, here we are. Um, so this month, I hadn't really picked a book. Uh, because it was kind of uh, here and there. We had Father's Day last week. So I kind of have just like this overall theme of celebrating the divine masculine. And today isn't really just necessarily about the divine masculine. So you get what you get. This, <laughs> this is what's coming. Um, do you remember um, when Reverend David Alt did the message? Um, and he was saying that, you know, things, things happen in life and so that or during the week when we're preparing or during the month, things happen that cause you maybe to change direction in what you're speaking about. It brings up some things. Um, I've been walking my dog Blue um, real early in the mornings now. And I'll go out for, you know, an hour, an hour and a half and walk. And boy, is that good, you know, contemplation time. Anybody do that? Contemplate while they're walking in nature. And I have just the most beautiful area and place, huge backyard of the, the mesa, going up the mesa to walk. So I get a lot of inspiration. Um, and I was inspiration, inspired to talk about this. Let's talk about creating our own reality. Has anyone heard that phrase? Seems to be, uh, we hear it a lot these days, don't we? It's, it's a big, almost kind of a buzz word, buzz phrase, creating your own reality. And it can be a really exciting idea when we hear about how we can manifest our dreams, right? That's really exciting. And sometimes, it's a hard pill to swallow, right? When we have things going on in our lives that are unpleasant or just downright scary or painful. You guys relate to what I'm saying? Um, thinking sometimes that we created these things in our life can be really disturbing in my mind and in my mental atmosphere. Anybody with me on that? Yeah, okay. So I know that we can all relate to these things because we all have this, this human experience. And um, it sets up a resistance within us, I think, to the idea that we create our own reality. So today I'm going to state it a little differently. Um, according to my understanding and my own experience of this idea, since that is always from the only place that I can talk is from my own experience and my own opinions. Um, so that's what you're hearing. Um, a way that I have found peace by creating, I found peace in like the junk in my life that happens. Let's see. 
I found a way around the junk in my life so that I can learn to let go and maybe not take myself or my life quite so seriously. Anybody take their life really, really seriously? I know that because I have done that my whole life. And learning to maybe meander around those difficult things where uh, I realize that I maybe don't have to take it so seriously. So first of all, I believe the, the truth with a capital T is that there is only one reality and that is God. So, uh, or, or whatever you call it, you don't have to call it God, um, but it is this, this something, um, the divine or the universe or the beloved. Some people call it science. This life force energy moving and creating and having its way with us in every moment. In God, we live and move and have our being. So it is in this vibrational frequency, which is love, that we call God. It's in this that we can create what we call our individual life experience which only appears to be our reality to us, right? Kind of like our very own motion picture starring us. But behind the scenes, giving this drama the substance and the power of life is the love of God, which is the only real thing. That is what reality is. That's reality itself that love of God. And our, our, our drama or our movie takes place within that. So in this scenario, we don't really create our own reality. We have created an ego personification with a drama story within this life called God, within reality itself. I believe God or love is thoroughly enjoying playing the game of life with us and through us. But when we don't understand the nature of God and creation, when we don't understand or we forget that God is our true reality, then we get scared that we're separated from our life source. And then this fear causes us to use our individual creativity in a negative way. Thinking thoughts of separation and dualism and opposites, God and something else. It's simply an ignorance of the law of God. And as we learn these laws and we use our minds to create within those laws of God or those laws of love, then we will see more of love, more loving people, more loving situations and conditions showing up in our individual experiences. Okay, so we can let go of frustration and guilt and victimhood for creating our lives full of negative drama. Anybody create some negative drama in their life? Like, all the time, right? But there's no sense in blaming ourselves. It's, we're innocent, okay? We, we need to just see our innocence and forgive ourselves and move on to change our movie, to create a new beginning, a new middle, towards a new eternity. The feelings that we get from pleasurable experiences, and I mean deep soul pleasure, not that egoic satisfaction, these feelings of joy and love and unity are our guideposts towards the expansion of love within us. It's like God saying, yes, come this way. Come the way of joy. The way of thinking thoughts of love, peace, forgiveness for ourselves and for everyone 
in our movie. Because we are all actors in each other's movie. Isn't that fabulous? I invite you to turn to your neighbor right now who is an actor in your movie and see them as an avatar of love. Can you do that? You don't have to say anything. It happens in your mind. See them as an avatar of love. Thank them in your mind for playing this role in your movie as they have the courage and love for you to show up exactly as you are seeing them in the production room of your own inner world. Thank you. Thank you. It's probably fairly easy in this church where we tend to agree and be like-minded, mostly, to accept that your neighbor is playing a role that you are assigning them in your movie. But when you walk out of these doors, a different kind, a different level of practice is required for you to be able to say, Namaste to all people. The God in me, that divine place in me, that spark of light in me, honors and recognizes the divine in you, and you, and you, and people beyond these doors, and people beyond the state and country and world. Now, think of your worst enemy right now. And that only means the person you're having the most trouble with, accepting as your brother slash sister in your movie right now. We all have that person, right? And don't make a big deal, but just give them a quick namaste and a smile. Just in your mind, I'm gonna do it. Let go and thank them for the role that they're playing so perfectly in your movie, starring you, right? Is it possible that you have assigned them this role? Is it possible you keep them stuck in this role in your life by the very way that you see them? Is it possible to start seeing them in a new way right now, today? As Roy would say, I'm just asking. <laughs> so we really have two realities or two worlds going on here, don't we? My inner reality and my outer reality. My inner reality is what we call consciousness. My outer reality is what we call this physical world. So I like the way that Elizabeth Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, writes about this difference. She says, your inner world is the foundation from where you create your life. It is connected to your soul and spirit's deepest desires and purpose. Although it is not tangible, your inner world exists only inside of your self, with a capital S. It encompasses all of your dreams and creative longings, all of the experiences you wish to have, and it is connected to everything in the universe. It is pure consciousness. It is the place where you find your equilibrium, where you are centered and grounded within your true self, capital T, capital S, true self. It is your place of power, your connection to source, where you can manage your energy and the vibration and frequency which you are sending out to the universe. This is how we create with our thoughts, visions, words, and actions. When we tend to our inner world, we feel fulfilled and whole the natural feeling that bubbles up from this wellspring of joy and contentment. 
Our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. Spend time building your inner world and your outer world will flourish like a garden that you tend to sweetly nourishing the bulbs and seedlings day after day, which become luscious, rich, and beautiful flowers. So we see that cultivating a rich, positive inner world where we have thoughts of truth, love, and peace allows us to create a movie, that movie plot that has the power of love propelling it forward from within us into our outer experience, from within us into the outer experience. I cannot see in my outer world what I do not see in my inner world. I can only see in my outer world what I see in my inner world. What I see in my outer world is how I view my inner world. So I want to read just a little bit. Um, I do have a book, Emmett Fox. Anybody love Emmett Fox? Yes. So he has uh, this book called Stake Your Claim, Exploring the Gold Mine Within. And they're just really short little things. Um, this one is called, What Do You See? What do you commonly see in life? Are you constantly witnessing error and negative things, or do you bear testimony of the inherent goodness of God and his creation? These are important questions because by your answers you can get a better understanding of yourself. What we see in the outer is but a reflection of the inner because we surround ourselves with a picture of our own beliefs. In other words, we manifest in general what we seriously think and believe. So if we want to find out what our habitual thinking is like, we have but to look around us and ask ourselves what we really see. The Bible says that we shall not bear false witness, but that is just what we are doing. For example, when we do not see the presence of God in every situation, or when we accept the appearance for the reality. On the other hand, we are a witness for God when we see the whole man where the sick one seems to be. When we forgive someone who has injured us and then see the Christ in him. When we see prosperity instead of lack, knowing that God supplies every need. Or when we see harmony and peace regardless of the seeming outer conditions. Perhaps you will recall the lines of Shakespeare, there is nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Are you seeing good everywhere? If not, start today to train yourself. You will be surprised to find how soon your own life will change for the better. So I found in my own spiritual growth that the experience that I really want most in my life is peace, inner peace, and outer peace. Because if I have peace, then what difference does it make what's happening out here or happening in my life? If I have peace, I can stop struggling. I can stop shuffling around the outside pieces and stop trying to edit out the things that I don't want or the people that I don't get along with. <clears throat> And I can move into a state of acceptance. Accepting God as the, as the one on the scene, behind the scenes, upholding the scenes with the grace of an unconditional love bigger than infinity. Can you even begin to grasp that kind of a love? Bigger than eternity. I want that peace that passes understanding. The peace of God flowing through my mind, through my heart, and through my veins, out picturing God's love as a perfect, harmonious picture, starring my higher self. I have another little reading here from Emmett. 
called your daily visit with God. <laughs> Who is our peace? Of course we all know that it is God alone who is our peace, although nearly all of us tend to forget it from time to time, however heartily we believe it. Our tendency is, occasionally at least, without realizing it, to rest upon ourselves, which means, of course, that we think that we are our own peace. We would never admit this to ourselves, but it happens, and the only result is that we get no results until we change that attitude. As soon as we begin to think like that, we shall quickly realize it, we will quick, quickly realize it because things will start to go wrong or we, will sh we shall begin to feel a little depressed. Then of course, we must remind ourselves that it is God who is our peace and put our confidence in God. In other words, rest on the Lord. These mistakes occur from time to time because we have been neglecting our daily visit with God. That visit can be prayer, meditation, spiritual reading, or any other spiritual exercise. This daily visit is the greatest possible investment that you could make with your time, the 10 or 15 minutes or half hour, whichever suits you best. Ask yourself what else you could possibly do with that time that would be of greater value or really help you more. And yet people frequently postpone it because they tell themselves that they haven't time today or have something much more urgent or important to do. Now, when you think that you are too busy for your daily visit, let me ask you frankly, what wonderful thing are you doing that is more important? Obviously, there could not be anything nearly as important as your daily visit with God. No matter what the other thing is, it cannot be as important as that. There is nothing that you could possibly do with that time which would bring you greater benefit in every respect. As a matter of fact, if you have something very important and urgent to do, you will always be able to find time to do it and to have your visit too. And your visit will make that very important thing go much more easily and successfully. Neglect anything else if you must, but do not neglect your daily visit with God. Acquaint thyself now with God and be at peace. Thanks, Emmett. So let's have a daily visit with God right now. I'll start you off right for, this, for the week. Close your eyes if you choose, relax. Open your mind, open your heart. Just receive these words. These words by Jack and Cornelia Addington. In my foolishness, I thought I had become separated from the goodness of God within me. Now I know that this could not be possible. I think, therefore, I am part of the infinite mind. I live, therefore, I am part of the infinite life of God. Even my false negative thinking cannot separate me from the truth with a capital T of my own being. Everywhere I go, thou art there. God is always available to me as infinite goodness, that love that will not let me go. Today, I accept more of the presence of God in my thinking, knowing that the measure of goodness I can accept in my inner experience becomes the measure of goodness outpictured in my outer experience. God is all in all, everywhere present. I can never be separated from God for a single instant. I am a divine 
perfect spiritual being uncontaminated by lack, sickness, or mental confusion. I am an idea in the mind of God, and God is thinking me into expression right this very minute. My awareness of the presence of God in my mind and heart is my answer to every seeming problem in the valleys and on the mountaintops thou art there and so it is we offer this song
down. Our second favorite. God, you are every mountain, God, you are every ocean, God, you are every canyon, every inch of earth and sky, God, you are every morning, God, you are every midnight, God, you are every moment, every second of my life. circulation. So as we take our gift, our tithe in our hand, knowing that this is my contribution for all that I have received that goes forth circulating and keeping me from being the bump in the road for that circulation. So our affirmation is don't worry about a
his circulation of our blessings goes forth, continuing its work, blessing our church, our community, and our world. And so it is. Thank you, Lou. Thank you so much. Uh, I believe we are ready to claim our good, which is right up here. So all together, um, as one voice, we will speak these affirmations um, and really put this vibrational energy out into the ethers. Um, you know, after meditation this morning and then the work that we do in the regular Sunday service, all of the affirmations that we speak together where two or more are gathered, very, very powerful in the world. And the more that we recognize that power moving out vibrationally and, and, and uh, hooking up with that frequency of love, the more we consciously recognize that, the more powerful it is. Okay, here we go. Today, I recognize the presence of God in everything I see. Little bird on the windowsill, you are God. Little rose bush, you draw your life from the same source as I. I am immersed in spirit as fish lives in water, and so it is. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place.